Broadcasting from Park Avenue West, you're watching WMFD Television, Channel 68.1, Mans. This program discusses sensitive mental health issues, including suicide. Viewer discretion is advised. Maybe an hour after we got the message that we lost Danny, uh, Danny's sister said to us, you know, we were all crying, and she says, what do we do? What do we tell people? And I'm like, baby, we got to tell them the truth. This is nothing that can be hidden because otherwise the suicidal win. We're not mental health professionals. This is just something that happened to our family. We direct people other places. And most important of all, I think, don't quit. Keep fighting. Keep living. Things will get better. Good evening and welcome to Sparking the Conversation. We're Jeff and Donna Heck with 33 Forever and we are so excited to be able to bring you weekly half hour messages, stories, and resources surrounding mental health topics and challenges. Our show's purpose and hope is to always provide information and inspiration, making conversations about mental health the norm. Greg Fry is our special guest tonight. Many of you may remember him as the quarterback of the Ohio State football team from 1986 to 1990 where he was a three-year starter and co-captain. At OSU, Greg was well-known for famous comeback games and also played on an OSU Big Ten Championship baseball team. Currently, Greg is an award-winning high school football color commentator with Spectrum News One and a longtime trainer of high school quarterbacks. His main professional focuses are helping people improve their physical health via safe supplementation and also their financial health via proper insurance and retirement planning. Greg lives in Columbus with his son and daughter. Greg, welcome to Sparking the Conversation. We're really glad to have you here tonight. Thanks for joining us. It's an honor to be here, guys. Oh. Well, we really appreciate it. And, 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 you know, you and I hooked up through the magic of Facebook recently, mm -hmm. uh, kind of got connected up, have had a lot of conversations, and we ended up talking about both 33 Forever and then some of your specific experiences that I had no idea about and I'm sure our audience doesn't know about as it related to some head injury problems you had some years ago and yes. some mental health challenges that you yourself had. Yes. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I mean, I've had a uh, history of concussions. You know, I grew up, uh, you know, playing a lot of sports and with that comes head injuries. And, mm -hmm. you know, I think like most, I think most people probably that play sports have a few. And I had, I probably had maybe 12 at least that I know of. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, some of those were in football. I think, I think if people look at me, they probably think, well, that was all football. But I'd say maybe half of those were football. Mm. But I had a few in basketball. I actually had a few ice skating when I was younger when I didn't really know it was a concussion. You know, bang my head. Yeah. Um, but uh, it, it came to a head in uh, 2008, I believe, 2008, 2009. Had a pretty serious injury uh, just via an accident. And um, about two days later, it really hit me. And, uh, and I lost the memory and uh, it really shook me. And that started about a nine year, just down, downward spiral of uh, a lot of symptoms because of that and uh, caused a lot of a turmoil in my life. And um, yeah. so, you know, clearly that's why we're here to talk about that today. Right, absolutely. Did it, um, when you started having your symptoms, did you realize it was from the concussion or did you think maybe something else was wrong? No, I did. I knew because, you know, I, I, I had a serious concussion in high school and um, it, the worst one I had in high school, it knocked me out. Okay. So I had about three days of symptoms, you know, major headache, you yep. know, I threw up for a couple hours, um, you know, just uh, some of the simple symptoms that you have. But in this case, um, it didn't happen right away. I mean, I, I had a big knot on my head. I mean, I hit it pretty hard, mm -hmm. you know, so I, I knew it hurt, <laughs> but I thought I was going to be fine. But mm -hmm. it was two days later, I woke up and I could not remember what I did the day before. And that really scared me. I mean, sure, I was absolutely. really scared. Yep. Yeah. So I went to the ER, you know, and, and you know, did all the testing. And, you know, it's pretty obvious you got a concussion. Um, but at that point, um, you know, that led to migraines, um, mm -hmm. short-term memory loss, um, I would call lethargy, like really low energy. Mm -hmm. um, my, my, you know, I got angry quicker, um, <laughs> among other things. I mean, there's a mm -hmm. lot of symptoms, but those are the major ones. Um, that really got worse. I mean, there was probably a six month period that it was bad. I couldn't really function too well. Um, and I remember going to one of the first doctors I went to was um, Dr. James Borchers at Ohio State, who still works with the Buckeyes. He and mm -hmm. I were teammates. So I thought, well, I'm going to go to Borch because I know Borch well, right? And he'll shoot straight. <laughs> and I remember him telling me, he's like, listen, you know, you got a serious concussion. You have to do nothing for two weeks. 
And I'm like, yeah, okay, I got this, right? <laughs> and I walked out, I mean, it went right over my head. And I'm like, ah, whatever. And I went home and I started doing some things. And I remember I cut the grass. And that just threw me back. Like the vibration from the lawnmower set me back. Like I was in, I was in bed for like two and a half days. Oh my! Miserable because of the vibration. I could, my brain couldn't handle it. So you know, a couple weeks go by, and I go back. He's like, "How you doing?" I'm like, "Well, that's good." He goes, "Well, did you do what I told you to do?" I'm like, "Not really." <laughs> <laughs> he goes, "Well, let's start over. You got to go for like two weeks and do nothing." He says, "You cannot have any stimulation. Hmm. No TV. You know, certainly no cutting the grass. Like nothing." don't work, like you just gotta just give your brain a rest. And but that was hard. Mm-hmm. And well, that and th- yeah, lasted a while. Yeah, the, the other thing I think you shared with us earlier is, even when you did that, your symptoms really didn't resolve. You continued right. to have symptoms for a long time. I did, and uh, you know, I went to see a variety of specialists, and I think um, one of the ones told me, he's like, look, you know, this is gonna be your lifestyle. Like, you've gotta be you know, really on top of your game as far as you can't do things back to back. Like you can't have a meeting and then another meeting. You gotta take a break in between. Um, and obviously, you know, as we've talked about, I mean, I take pretty good care of myself, you know, uh, from a nutritional standpoint, I get pretty good sleep. So I was pretty good at those things, but I really had to make some major changes in how I operated. And it was tough, because I, I like to go. I wanna, mm-hmm. I wanna do things, you know, and I had, I had a business going on, and, you know, a young child and, you know, and, and, a, really, and a marriage at the time. So it was difficult to slow down. Um, so yeah, the first six months were really rough, but then it, that, this went on for seven, eight years. Well, you were at the prime of your, uh, your life in that respect, not, not needing to slow down in any way. So we're going to take a break. And when we come back, let's talk about how it affected you mentally. Um, so we'll be right back with, um, Greg here on, um, sparking the conversation. Hi, I'm Joe Trollian, the Executive Director for the Richland County Mental Health and Recovery Services Board. Addiction to drugs and alcohol create a personal struggle as well as impact those around you. You are not alone. We have many professionals and organizations who care. Reach out for help today. Know it before you need it. Visit Know It, the letter B, the number four, the letter U, needit.com. Brought to you by the Richland County Mental Health and Recovery Services Board. Growing and preserving a legacy of hope and success within our community. Happy anniversary, Mix 106.1. This year, we are celebrating 60 years of Mansfield's best mix. Mix 106.1, and it's all thanks to you. When we shop local, our community thrives, and so do our favorite businesses. So let's shop local first. Thanks for your continued support. Here's to another 60 years of shopping local first. Introducing the Cool Turtle, the ultra comfortable mask enhancer that creates a protective, cool, and breathable space between your mask and your face. Simply slide under any mask or gaiter and immediately feel the refreshing pocket of air surrounding your face. Cool Turtle's ergonomically designed soft, comfortable shell immediately reduces mask friction, allowing you to breathe and talk in a comfortable environment. I can actually breathe. With the Cool Turtle, no more sweating. It's like I don't even have a mask on. Call now and get not one, not two, but three cool turtles for just $10. Order now and we'll send you two more cool turtles free. No fees, absolutely free. Plus, you can get a 10-pack of four-ply face masks. Just pay a separate fee. This offer is not available on Amazon. Get the real cool turtle now. Call 1-800-374-3671. That's 1-800-374-3671. Or visit at coolturtle.com. Order now. This program discusses sensitive mental health issues, including suicide. Viewer discretion is advised. Welcome back to Sparking the Conversation. We're here tonight with our guest, Greg Fry, former Ohio State quarterback. Greg's talking about his head injury uh, back in 2008, right? Is that what you said? Yes. Yes. So, you know, you talked about some of the physical symptoms, and you talked about literally struggling with it after your injury in 08 for for years and years. Mm -hmm. But the physical symptoms also had some mental health consequences to, to them, too. I mean, we always talk about mental health and physical health are the same thing, Greg. But, but the mental health consequences you had from this head injury were, were different than you experienced before. For sure. It was, uh, it was quite challenging. I think, uh, 
you know, if I boiled it down, it would be relationally. I was married at the time, mm -hmm. and it really affected my relationship because I wasn't able to function like I normally would. And there were times when I just, you know, I had to go lay down. You know, I just, if I had a migraine, it was, I was done. Right. So I couldn't participate in, you know, just being a dad or whatever sometimes, or even doing things around the house. And then business-wise, it was really tough being in social situations because there were many days when, you know, I might have a migraine or a headache, uh, and my, my short-term memory wasn't really good. And I, name recall was a big struggle for me. Hmm. And in a social setting at meet, you know, larger meetings, it was tough because I would have an anxiety going in because I knew like I wasn't on my A game mentally mm -hmm. and I was gonna struggle with names. So even walking in the door, I was already feeling it. And then being in those situations made it really, really challenging. I think the nature of your celebrity a little bit and the fact that people in Ohio especially mm -hmm. know you, know who you are, know your history, you walk into a social setting and they act like they know you right. because they know you as a football player And so right. there's some expectation that goes along with that. You got to be on your A game. Yeah, yeah And and I was used to being on my A game right. too So it was you know, I felt like I was frustrated that I couldn't be sharp like I normally would be you know And there were times when I would run into somebody and I would look them in the eye and, I, and like it's somebody I know I know well, right and the name's not coming and it's like I'm trying to grab it and it's not there, and I'm digging, and it's just that that's frustrating. While I'm having a conversation, like these thoughts are in my head, like, yep. what do I do, you know? Well, you know, with your training, both physically and mentally as an athlete, you are able to plow through things that uh, the average person might not be able to do. And with your mental health, uh, how it affected you, what on the flip would you say if it was just, you know, me? having all these issues and uh, and I can't do any of the things I did. I mean, you know, I don't have that training to be as strong as you. What do you think would have happened? <sighs> Boy, I don't know. It was rough. I mean, I think I think that the learning point that I want to convey to people is get help, number one, you know, because yep. I, I asked for help. And that, and that certainly um, allowed me to get through that. But I think, you know, I'm very fortunate that I, I lean back on my, you know, the lessons I learned in football, you know, playing football at Ohio State. <laughs> There's some good parts to it, but there were some rough parts to it. Right. That I think that that tenaciousness and that that tough that you know learning how to deal with adversity is just allowed me to plow through because I knew other the way I had to plow through because it wasn't easy and I, I had a lot of rough days. Um, but at the same time, I knew enough to ask for help because I couldn't do it alone. There's no way I could have done that alone. I had a lot of people helping along the way, uh, and I had to go find you know, through the course of finding different practitioners in a variety of fields to get to the right one. It took me probably nine years to finally get to the right one. So, yeah, it was, uh, it was not an easy process. Depression, anxiety, yeah. kind of fear of social settings, yeah. all of those things, things that you experienced that were just probably not in your, in your normal DNA, right? right? Yeah. yeah, all of the above. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was a struggle. I mean, there, you know, when you're... When you're not able to perform like you want to perform in, in those social settings, you know, and not and not able to perform at home, you know, just the normal duties that you'd want to do, you know, yeah, depression for sure. And and you know, I think we talked earlier. I I, I was never suicidal, mm -hmm. but there were certainly times I could understand and relate to somebody that maybe was suicidal because the pain was so great. It's like I just, I just want it to go away. Mm -hmm. You know, there were days yeah. I had migraines that were so bad that I just had to lay in bed with no light, no noise, nothing. Mm -hmm. I mean. If there were kids playing in the house, I couldn't take it. Like, it just drove me crazy. Right. That was hard. Um, and that is, this is hard. No way around it. Right? Well, what type of support does someone going through a head injury? And, and I'm sure people that are watching, some of them either have it themselves. But what type of support would they need that you could uh, recommend to, you know, their families? Yeah, it's tough. I mean, first of all, getting support at home is huge. Mm -hmm. And it was hard for me. You know, my, my wife at the time struggled with that. And I, you know... I, I'm open-minded to the fact that it had to be difficult for her because mm -hmm. it's not something you can just fix, you know, with a cast or, a, you know, an ice bag, you know, and, and you can't see it when it's a head injury. So it's mm -hmm. so hard and you don't know when it's going to end. Yes. Um, so, the, the, you know, having understanding at home that, that it's rough um, is, is one thing. And then secondly is you got to go get help. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it may not be the first person you find. Again, as I mentioned, it, it took me a while to get to the right person. But I kept, I just kept asking and kept asking and, and kept, you know, I'm, I'm all about self-improvement. Like, you know, how, how can I get better with this? Um, and, and again, it, it took me a while to finally dial in the right person. But I think that I just believe in, and I can't do it all myself. Mm -hmm. I got to go ask for help. And sometimes for a guy, 
That's really tough. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's really hard. Especially a football player. Yeah. With all that. <laughs> yeah, right? So you did get help. Yeah. And uh, when yeah. did uh, things start settling down for you? So it was probably, I think it was 2016, um, through a mutual friend that told me her story that she had been through a rough, you know, physical and mental situation. Uh, she said, there's a guy in Davenport, Iowa, who I happen to know a little bit uh, from my Advil Care days in that business. Um, and she said, you know, you go see him. And I said, okay. So I decided to go see him, and we connected on the phone. We did it like a 30-minute consult, and I liked what I heard. I made the decision to drive 10 hours to go see him. And uh, Dr. Chris Beckwith, um, his wife Michelle, I went to see him for a couple days, and literally in 24 hours, I felt significantly. I mean, I drove there with a migraine. I felt like crap. And within a day, I felt better. And I remember driving home with hope. I had not had this hope for probably eight or nine years that I could get back to normal because I was used to living at, a, at a maybe 65, 70%. And just I was resigned to the fact that that was going to be the rest of my life. So now all of a sudden I had hope. And literally, I would say the vast majority of my symptoms were gone in three weeks. And amazing. it was amazing. That is incredible. We yeah. want to talk about that when we come back. We want to talk about kind of that message of hope. And we want mm -hmm. to talk about really how you got that hope back. But we've got to take a quick break. We'll be back with Greg Fry right here on Sparking the Conversation on WMFD. one thing to her, I think what we would let her know is how important she was to us. And I wish that I hadn't been so reluctant to confront him. Be a friend, listen to him, and get him help. I am so glad someone reminded me that I'm worth it and will always be worth it. I'm glad that I have people now that support what I want to do in my dream of helping other people. If you've been injured, whether personal injury, medical malpractice, or wrongful death, you are not alone. And you definitely don't have to fight alone. While you focus on recovery, let the Heck Law Offices focus on your case. With over 45 years of combined legal experience, we understand your situation and the entire overwhelming legal process. With an injury, you're already handling too much. Let our team be your advocate. I'm Jeff Heck. And I'm Jeff Stifler. We're, We're Mansfield's, Mansfield's Injury Lawyers. Lawyers. Call us today or visit us at hecklawoffices.com. Is bad weather making it hard to drive? Trust Battle Vision Storm, the revolutionary glare reduction glasses that turn your sight bright during bad weather. Battle Vision Storm uses light optimizing lenses that block blue rays so you see clearly in heavy rain at night or blinding snow during the day. Heavy rain, snow, sleet or fog can make driving impossible. Not with Battle Vision Storm. And they're not just for storms. They turn night to bright, even in perfect weather. Get your Battle Vision Storm for just $19.99, complete with lifetime guarantee. Order right now and we'll send you a second pair absolutely free. That's two Battle Vision Storm glasses for just $19.99. This TV offer is not available on Amazon. Order now. Call 1-800-940-0848 or visit BattleVisionStorm.com. So call 1-800-940-0848 now. Welcome back. We've been talking with Greg Fry, a former OSU quarterback, which again, thank you for being here. Um, Greg, you talked about your help that you finally got. Could you go into that? Um, because it wasn't our typical... Uh, Get a concussion, go to the neurologist, he fixes you and you're fine. What happened? Yeah, um, Dr. Chris Beckwith, his focus is on neuro, uh, neurochiropractor. Okay. And, um, you know, it, it's, it's a more holistic approach, I would say, from my, my standpoint, if I dumb it down. Um, but I was very open to that. And, um, you know, simply put, I think there's a term called neuroplasticity, that the brain can heal itself. And I remember reading a book about this. There's a book, uh, it's called Neuroplasticity. I think the, the, the Healing of the Brain, I believe. I'll, I'll, I'll remember the name. Um, and it just talked about how the brain, you know, there's certain parts of the brain that can, that can be injured, that can, that can heal. And he really understood that. And, you know, when I went to uh, Iowa to see him, he did some testing, you know, and he kind of, by the, you know, he knew how to find the, the area that was, that was, not healed, and basically my brain was out of balance. You know, right side, left side were not working in balance. So, 
you know, he knew how to treat that. And, and to me, the treatment was very simple, mm -hmm. uh, but it, it took his expertise to understand kind of how to figure out what was wrong. And, and again, as I've said, I mean, literally in 24 hours, I felt better. And in a couple of weeks, literally, I won't, I won't say all my symptoms were gone. I've had a few here and there, but for the most part, gone. So, you know, I want people to know that there's hope that, you know, you can find the right person. And he may not be able to fix everybody, but, you know, I've sent him a few people in the last couple of years, that, you know, with concussion symptoms, and uh, he's been able to help them. Yes, football players, too. I mean, everybody worries about the concussions you guys right. get. I mean, right. it's it's probably daily, weekly, I don't know. Yeah. And, and to have somebody... CTE is a big deal. Yeah. yeah. Well, so, and I think the message I want to get out there is it's, it's not just football. It, it's in yes. a lot of other sports. Okay. I think the, the, the media wants to make it out to be all football, and it's not the case. I mean, there's other sports that don't have helmets yeah. that are just as bad. Um, but I, the, the point is, is that you can get treatment. And it's in, you know, there are people out there that really understand this. And obviously it's still, there's still a lot of gray area out there, but mm -hmm. I certainly found a guy that uh, does a fabulous job with this. And that, uh, to me, that gave me a lot of hope. So speaking of hope, I mean, what do you have for, for maybe somebody who's dealing with mm -hmm. a traumatic brain injury, a head injury of some kind, who has found themselves in kind of that cycle that you found yourself in, Greg, which is that, you know, the, your, your, your mental self isn't your best. You, it's hard to keep your physical self up as a result. What, what's your message to somebody like that? What kind of hope do you have for that at this point? Obviously, you found treatment. It, it's a, <clears throat> it's a two-pronged approach, I guess. And it's, it's one of the teachings I have for my young quarterbacks is you have to be patient, which means acceptance of where you're at, but also impatient that you got to keep pushing forward at the same time. And that's a tough one. You know, I, I really work on acceptance in my life of, of, you know, life happens, right, and things that happen around me. Um, so you have to accept the symptoms, but you have to keep pushing to know that it can get better. And frankly, I was at a point where I didn't, wasn't sure. I kept pushing, but mm -hmm. I had a lot of doubts because it was rough and it had gone on for so long. Um, but it was in me to keep pushing, keep looking, and keep, you know, trying to find the right person. And I think that tenacity finally opened the right door. So the message mm -hmm. is, is, you know, you can find that. Um, is, is, you know, as much despair as you might feel, as much adversity as you might go through, you can find the right person to help you. And you, if you just keep asking and keep looking, you know, there's hope out there. And you, you mm -hmm. can get that done. You know, as you said at the beginning of our intro here, just don't give up. Yeah. Yeah, there is always yeah. hope if you don't give yeah. up. And I think that's, again, the message I want to put out there is, is to keep asking for help. You know, and as mm -hmm. a guy, as we talk, that's hard. You know, maybe that's hard for anybody, frankly, you know, especially when it's, it's in your brain and, and people don't see it. Yeah. You can't see it from the outside looking in. Um, and that's, that's a tough one. But I think to communicate and open up that door, you allow other people to help you, and that's important. Well, I think your, your message earlier about at, making sure you're asking for help and not being so dependent upon yourself that yeah. you can't see other avenues because that's probably, I'm guessing, that's one of the reasons that door opened for you. I believe so, yeah. you know, and look, I'm a guy, I'm a fixer, I want to do it, right? Yeah. And I, you know, it's, you know, you know I played quarterback, I felt like I had control of what was going on, I really didn't, but I thought I did, right? <laughs> um, you know, we all want to feel like we have control over that, but, you know, there's so many things we don't have control over, and, and again, that's where, you know, there are people out there, and, it's, and maybe it's not neurochiropractor, you know, but it, whatever it is, or yeah. whoever it may be, and whatever their expertise is that, that can help, and, and, you know, I went to counseling, too. I mean, I, I should mention that because, mm -hmm. you know, I think that's a big thing. I needed to go to counseling to figure out how it was affecting my life and certain the ways that I could counteract that, you know, if, I, if my anger went up or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. okay. And that happened to me. So I had to yeah. learn how to deal with my emotions better. So, again, for people watching, you know, counseling is not a bad thing. It's okay. Yeah. yeah, we promote that all the time. Yeah, absolutely. Greg Fry. Thank you so much for being on our show tonight. We really appreciate it. It's great, it's great to be with you, to meet you finally face to face. We'll be back in just a minute with our memory moment. Right now, get a free sausage McMuffin with egg when you download the McDonald's mobile app. 
Stay tuned to get this ultra nonstick bakeware set free from Granite Stone. Get ready for a kitchen full of the most durable ultra nonstick cookware at the most affordable price anywhere. Introducing Granite Stone Blue, the fast, easy way to cook gourmet family meals every day. Granite Stone Blue cookware is pressed from solid aluminum and coated three times with our durable ultra nonstick Granite Stone Blue finish. They come with vented tempered glass lids and are 100% dishwasher and metal utensil safe. You can get the Granite Stone Blue 12-piece set for just four easy payments of $49.95. As a bonus, we'll include our stainless steel steamer and fry set. Plus, you'll get our Granite Stone Blue bakeware set. Together, they're a $110 value, yours free. That's an incredible 20-piece Granite Stone Blue set. Plus, we'll ship your entire order free. Order now. To order, call 1-800-545-1648. That's 1-800-545-1648 or visit granitestoneblue.com. Meet Bob Minetti, loving husband, father, and pancreatic cancer survivor. I'm so glad I learned what was possible for me. To learn more about the latest research, including clinical trials, visit pancreaticcancercollective.org. Hello and uh, welcome back. Um, we're having our memory moment today, and this is a big family memory moment. It's not just a Danny memory moment. No, you're right. So last week, uh, we celebrated our 20th wedding anniversary, Donna and I did, and we, yeah. we uh, brought these six kids into this, uh, this blended family 20 years ago, and we've got some things we want to share. This is actually from our wedding day 20 years ago. It was a really uh, cold, snowy, blustery day. Yeah. And just to give you a little perspective on uh, on that, yes, the mustache is long gone, by the way. <laughs> and the other thing there, too, is the little one in front, that's our daughter, Alex. She's now 27 years old and a very uh, uh, very successful young professional woman. So that, that just gives you a perspective of how long it's been. Yep. Um, the, the next picture you see, I will never forget this. I had uh, taken a snap of it. Um, Jeff was down below. We, we got married in this little house. And Danny looks over to Sarah and says as loud as she can, so wonder if this is going to stick this time. And everybody, of course, thought it was funny because she is nothing but inappropriate. And uh, yes, it stuck. And there she um, is uh, giving a little bit of her Danny attitude uh, on that given day, too. But she was she was a beautiful uh, maid of honor. She was, For her yes. mom that day. And her brother was my best man. And so it, it's actually a very good memory, a very cool memory, and, and just seemed appropriate. Yeah, it was yep. just, yeah, a total family event. So even though we are married 20 years, it is a blending of 20 years. And I looked high and low for our invitation. Um, it was the coolest thing. Uh, it was in the shape of the Brady Bunch squares yep. with all our kids. And in the middle, Jeff wrote. Uh, here's the story. So <laughs> we, uh, that, that's, that's really our story yes. and, uh, and the story lives on. So anyway, that's a really yep. good memory moment and, really a good, and a good memory, not just of Danny, but of, of our family. And we're yep. happy to share that with you yep. tonight. Thank you very much for again sharing that, for watching our show, and we will see you again next week.